We have a major announcement on Hot Stove today. These are some past notable winners of the Heart and Hustle Award created by the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association in 2005. This award is voted on by alumni and active major leaguers and is presented annually to an active player who quote demonstrates a passion for the game of baseball and best embodies the values spirit and traditions of the game. So each club has a heart and hustle award winner and in the American League congratulations to this group uh, a few newcomers to the award some who have claimed it before in the National League congratulations to this group each team's heart and hustle award winner and it is from these 30 club winners that one overall heart and hustle award winner is crowned and it's our pleasure to do that today to seven time all star four time gold glover Paul Goldschmidt who joins us on hot still Paul congratulations on winning the heart and hustle award. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You have won a lot of awards in your career and you're a finalist for National League MVP this year. What is the heart and hustle award rank in the I guess in the pantheon of of postseason mm -hmm. honors. Oh, it's a great honor. You know, there's a lot of different stuff out there. Some is for performance. You know, this one's a little different, and uh, but it's a big honor. I mean, that's something you can control is how you play the game. It's something that's very important to me, something that was taught to me at a young age, you know, watching all the big leaguers when I was a kid and growing up and and now understanding that we're role models and, and how we go out and, and hustle and, and play the game you know, a certain way. Kids are emulating that and something I'm thinking about every day when I take the field and um, – to win this award is a great honor. Well, Paul, it, it clearly shows. You're, you're one of my favorite players to watch because you run out every ground ball, you hit balls in the gap, you're thinking extra base. I don't think people realize how good a base runner you are. Uh, it's not like you're a, a Billy Hamilton blazer, but you still run pretty good. When did the base running become so important to you? Um, I think honestly in the minor leagues when I was drafted with the Diamondbacks, uh, Joe Youngblood was our, our base running coordinator and, and he was on us to do it the right way to steal bases, to get good reads, to go first and third, all those things. And it didn't matter what position you were playing and you didn't really have a choice at that time. And then I got to the big leagues and uh, Eric Young Sr. was our first base coach. He was one of the first guys, probably the first guy who sat me down and showed me in the video room how to study pitchers and what to do. And, and Kirk Gibson was our manager and he was a great base runner. So it was just a big thing. And, and once I started kind of seeing the benefits of it, it was something that I realized you know, could really help you. You know, your offense is going to go up and down, but you can affect the game in so many ways. So to be able to still be a good player, maybe when you're struggling offensively, whether that's base running or defense or another way, that was something I learned and something I take a lot of pride in. I, I got two questions I'm kind of intrigued with. We'll, we'll obviously uh, later in the week, we'll talk about the MVP award and I'll, I'll dive into a couple questions then because I get to do that show and you will be on it. My front runner for the National League. I'm just throwing that out there. But I thought it was interesting for the first time really in your career outside of maybe Gibby and those guys on your coaching staff you got some real veteran guys that, that had accomplished more than maybe you did. How, how mm -hmm. different was that to talk to them and have conversations about situations and things. Yeah, I mean, when I got traded, it was uh, it was really cool. I was excited to play with Yachty and, and Wayne were the guys and then Albert came over this year and. For me, it was just always a learning opportunity. Of, of course, when you, you first get there, you're trying to meet everyone and, and try to get to know them. Um, but then just seeing how they were and, you know, just tried to follow their lead, continue to pick their brains and and then, you know, share some of the knowledge that was taught to me. So, you know, anything I know about the game of baseball, I learned from someone else. So it's not like I would ever be telling someone, hey, this is my way or this is what I do. But you know, this is what these other guys taught me. This is what these Hall of Famers, this All-Star. So I'm always talking with people trying to learn. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a young player or a veteran. You know, there's always something you can learn. And, and that's what I try to do. So last question, and I'll turn it back over to Matt here. Um, the National League with the DH. You've been in the league all this time without the DH. How different was it as a player, a position player, to not have, the D, to, to not, to not have pitchers hitting? As a fan of the game, I like the strategy when the pitchers were hitting, but I think it is better for the game long term now that we have the DH. Um, you know, there was just so many weird things that would happen and, and the game was a little simpler and, and now to get, you know, a little bit more offense and get more players in and, you know, for me, selfishly, I got to DH maybe 15, 20 times. So to 
save myself physically a little bit, be able to rest. And, and other players did the same thing um, was great. And then, you know, for us selfishly to have Albert, I mean, he wasn't probably coming back to St. Louis if we don't have the DH. So for him to be able to come back, finish his career in St. Louis, get those 700 homers. I mean, it was incredible. It was, it was like it was meant to be. So I think it's great for the game long-term. I miss a little bit of that strategy, but overall it's, it's going to be better. Yeah, the, the, the bunt defense. I mean, you were such a great defender in those situations. Yeah. It, you know, it was weird to go and going into spring training where, you know, you work on bun defense so much because it's happening usually at least once a game, if not more. And then we're like, we might not see a bun for the whole month, like a straight sacrifice. So that was weird to not have that play happen. And then when it does happen in the playoffs or an extra inning game, you're like, man, I haven't made this play in forever. So that was definitely weird. And just making sure that we practiced it a little bit more because it just wasn't happening as often. You know, while we're on the uh, the subject of, you know, modern game and rules changes, Paul, I got to take your temperature on the banning of the shift for next year. I mean, you're not a guy whose offensive profile is going to change very much. He hit 317 this year, this past year, one of your best batting averages ever. But there are a lot of guys that you've played with and against for whom uh, now it's a whole new thing and batting averages might jump a little bit. Are you are you with us on this uh, rule alteration banning the shift or do you? Does it care at all in your in your heart, in your mind? In your oh. <laughs> well, first off, I mean, as a player, we just got to play what the rules are. So I don't really, you know, whatever they change the rules are, I'll just adapt and try to do my best. But, I mean, I understand why they did it, trying to get a little bit more offense in the game. And, and especially those line drives that lefties were hitting, you know, that would be a hit every single time, you know, keeping the infielders on the, the dirt. So I, I think it's going to be better. It's going to, you know, kind of, get the game back a little bit how it was, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes. And you'll still be able to, you know, for a lefty, they'll still be able to get the shortstop almost all the way up the middle in the third baseman. So it'll kind of take away these extreme shifts. Um, and and I think it will be better for, for the fans if you're looking at that, that big picture view. We like to ask everybody this in the off season, as far as your workout program uh, and when you ramp it up. I mean, I know everybody takes a little bit of time after the postseason is over, but you know, you broke in at age 23, young bull, probably doing a lot of squats, deadlifts, and all that he-man stuff. At the age of 35, do you work out the same in the off season as as when you were younger? No, I mean, I've adjusted. I, I take less time off, to be honest. You know, you you usually I used to take a lot, a lot of time off when I first got to the league and, you know, you kind of get out of shape and it takes you a while to get back in. Now I don't want to get out of shape and, and just kind of start getting after it. But yeah, I mean, you can't recover like you did when you were younger. And so you just have to really be smart about the way you lift. You can still lift heavy. You still need to be strong. If you're not doing that, then, you know, people are going to be passing you by, but you got to be smarter about how you do it better about how you recover and uh definitely make sure the way you're lifting is uh is not as dangerous for uh so you don't hurt yourself so paul uh, obviously thursday is the mvp coming up uh, is this your best season do you think i think it was my best season so i mean who knows what that means other guys had great years too but um you know i had a, a year or two a little bit in arizona that were really good but even last year or two years ago whatever we are now 2021 um, with St. Louis, I thought could have been my best year as well, even though those numbers weren't maybe quite as good as I had as a year earlier. But um, I was able to to kind of keep that going from 21 to 22, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, Paul, congratulations, stuff, man. man, on winning the Heart and Hustle Award. It's a really prestigious honor. I know uh, that's something you're very proud of, but you're a humble guy, so we'll brag on it for you. And good luck on uh, MVP night coming up tomorrow. All right, thanks. Appreciate it.